The Opsin is a helmet-mounted digital night vision unit. Some recent reviews out there hype the Opsin, and it looks like they're using IR floodlights or dusk or pre-dawn light conditions to make the Opsin look unrealistically good. To be fair though, the Opsin definitely raises the bar on digital performance a lot. This item was purchased anonymously from Optics Planet by a fellow patriot and a night vision enthusiast like myself. To the friend who trusted me with the device for an extended review, thank you. Should you get an Opsin? Well, that depends. Maybe you want to murk pumpkins on New Year. Maybe you want to impress your totally based internet friends that you can really trust in real life. Maybe you're preparing to be deadly in the mountains like Flannel Daddy. Maybe you're not allowed to buy tubes in your location. After presenting all the information, at the end of this video, I'll give you my final realistic analysis on what I think the Opsin's capable of. Then you'll be able to decide for yourself. But I'm working on some t-shirts and I have a Patreon too. Recently, I've been comparing digital against analog intensifier tubes, and digital does offer a number of potential advantages. But up to this point, tubes have been the clear winner. The Opsin's digital technology does give a very unique viewing perspective on nighttime. In open country, if you have a good moon, even a moon covered by clouds, the trees were imbued with a beautiful iridescent moon glow, and it just doesn't show up as well on the video footage. I found the viewing experience to be pretty, and the mixing in of visible light colors with near IR light was fascinating. The inclusion of color in the image is useful in many circumstances compared to the green scale or gray scale that you find in the world of intensifier tubes. Go on. It would be much harder to identify, for example, a green or a red car wearing tubes, but the Opsin does color if there's a bit of ambient light around. With a decent moon out, the Opsin can run and gun alongside your friends with intensifier tubes, and you might not get laughed at for being the token poor. Compared to the Aurora, the Opsin is at least twice the device, probably even more than twice the device. Being digital, you can snap in an SD card and easily get good quality point of view footage of your low light adventures. Technically, you can do point of view with analog tubes, but it's clunky and has bad image quality, so it sucks. In good moon conditions, the Opsin might even be better than some Gen 2 devices. In lower light situations with cloud cover and a canopy of trees, the Opsin keeps up, sort of. You can drop the frame rate down to 30 frames per second and get decent illumination, but that's where the refresh lag gets intrusive. You can still walk around and plausibly shoot targets at 30 frames per second, but you won't be high speed and the lag made me feel dizzy after a bit. 30 frames per second is doable, but far from ideal. If the night lighting conditions are decent, you can speed the frame rate up to 60 or 90 frames per second. At the higher frame rates, I didn't have a problem with the Opsin, and especially at 90, I found it to be smooth, and I couldn't really tell the difference in refresh rate compared to using intensifier tubes. So that's a lot of progress in the world of digital night vision. The rechargeable battery on the Opsin works well, and it doubles as a helmet counterweight. I didn't time it closely, but the device seems to last longer than its advertised 8 hours of runtime. The battery might even last a lot longer than 8 hours, but I'm not really positive, and I don't care that much. Although I haven't used the Opsin long term, I do like how it feels. The device is lightweight, while the fit and finish gives the impression that it's well made, and it feels like it should be reasonably durable. The Opsin feels a bit lighter than the PVS-14 if you're not counting the battery pack, which velcros to the back of your helmet. The Psyonix Aurora has been useful, but the Aurora cannot beat the PVS-14 in any conditions. I own an Aurora, and I like it for what it is, but I still have to be realistic about the Aurora's limitations. With the Opsin, I would say that it can compete with a PVS-14 in some conditions. This means that compared to the Aurora, the Opsin is something of a game changer. Comparing Opsin to Aurora, the form factor on the Opsin is much better for head-mounted use, the Opsin's refresh rate is much better than the Aurora, the Opsin definitely beats the Aurora by a long shot in low light sensitivity, I would give the Aurora some credit because it's more optimized for use as a camera. If I had to choose between an Aurora Pro or otherwise versus the Opsin, I would definitely get an Opsin hands down. Let's talk about the modes in the Opsin device. You can change the frame rate and the light sensitivity. They call the light sensitivity exposure value. 
and you change this by a system of long and short button presses. This system works, but if you go too far, you have to scroll all the way back through the selection that you want. When I was first using this device, I just used the default settings and sent it, but doing it that way, you'll lose performance in truly low light conditions. FYI, you can't really be selecting through digital camera menus under what we'll call serious duress. Screen brightness can be adjusted with a twist knob that resembles the manual gain on some intensifier tubes, but the twist knob doesn't change the actual light sensitivity, aka exposure value, it just changes the brightness of the screen. Turning up the gain knob increases screen brightness, but I'm angry that the twisty knob does not also adjust the exposure value, which would be a lot more intuitive and useful. Much like a thermal device, the Opsin will occasionally nuke which is an acronym for non-uniformity correction. This is a slight occasional pause in the display or the device recalibrates its sensors to improve the image. You can set the nuke to automatic or off, but nuke won't change the exposure value, which I feel like it really should. The digital zoom is mostly useless, but thanks for devoting an entire button to it. On the Opsin's brightest setting, my laser aiming module overpowered the device at close range, and that's coming from a hollow sun. Granted, I could have scrolled through the menu and adjusted the Opsin, but that would have taken an unrealistic amount of time for trying to shoot targets, shoot on the move, and shoot multiple targets. In general, I do like the Opsin. More importantly, I love the technological progress that Psyonix's Opsin represents but this really wouldn't be an honest review if I didn't tell you about my pet peeves. Some of these pet peeves should be easy to solve, so dear Psyonix, please check some things off this list and improve your device. The lens cap is terrible, period. It has this recess in the shroud that allows you to clip the cap out of the way, but in the real world, it came loose on me randomly and played peekaboo with me. No, not cute peekaboo either. Why didn't Psyonix use an elastic lens cap that holds itself out of the way like everybody else? Another pet peeve of mine, and this is probably the biggest, is the lack of an everything auto mode. Ideally, the Opsin would come with an automatic setting that adjusts light sensitivity, screen brightness, and even the refresh rate based on the conditions. For me to use this as a primary GoFast device, I'd really need the ability to set outer parameters and then have the software just adjust within those parameters automatically. An automatic adjustment would be ideal for moving in and out of heavily wooded areas, in and out of structures, in and out of areas with and without natural light. All of these things would really be much better if it had an automatic adjustment mode. You can't go fast and also click through menus to optimize your device to each condition. Perhaps via firmware, software could add an auto setting where the nuke will dynamically adjust the exposure value and frame rate between given conditions. But maybe having a bunch of arcane settings and menus within the option will give users a greater sense of discovery. Perhaps users will think that the ultimate setting is possible, but just not quite there yet. Subjectively, the screen seems to adversely affect my eye's light sensitivity more than an analog unit. After playing outside for a while, you'll lose night vision in the eye that's looking through the screen more than it seems like you would if you were using traditional night vision goggles. This point may be subjective and it may not matter to you, but it is worth mentioning. My next pet peeve is more of a comment on the marketing of the Opsin device. The video footage that you see must be in dusk or pre-dawn conditions and not in full darkness. One big YouTube channel just did an Opsin review, and their review is like seeing the commercial to a Big Mac and then seeing a Big Mac in real life. Real talk, don't eat fast food because Meal Team 6 is going to die. In the real world, I could still absolutely use the Opsin for passive and active aiming, shooting while moving, and land navigation. It's just not really quite as eye-popping as the sizzle reels make it out to be, so just be ready for that. My last pet peeve with the Opsin is the plugin's location. It interferes with the mounting system when adjusted for some people's eyes. Psyonix could have simply changed the position of the plug. Also with regard to the plug, the design of the plug is hard to use in complete darkness, so I found myself using white light to plug in the external battery. Something a little bit more intuitive would have helped out a lot. Opsin versus the PVS-14. In the dense triple canopy forests and unrelenting rainstorms of the Pacific Northwest, the Opsin struggled at 90 frames per second. If swift land navigation through triple canopy forests in bad conditions is a must-have for you, 
then a Gen 3 PVS-14 might be the better option. In these harsh conditions, even Gen 3 white phosphor devices will look bad, but you'll still be able to resolve a useful image from a Gen 3 tube. In these near-freezing rains, thick clouds, and dense canopy of forest, the option was useless for head-mounted land navigation without a surefire vampire light or dropping the frame rate. After playing with screen brightness, frame rate, and digital gain, you could see sort of okay, but the lag made me feel a bit nauseous when I moved around. Set on the lowest frame rate, you could sort of get by, just don't expect to run and gun in truly bad lighting conditions. Cheap Gen 2 intensifier tubes don't do very well in bad conditions either, but at least with those you don't have lag. Of course, the Opsin can record good quality video, which you can't do well with the PVS-14, so for some go-fast LARPing adventures, the ability to record POV could be valuable for intel gathering, debriefing, or perhaps for industrial or law enforcement uses. Opsin's technology. While I may sound negative about the Opsin relative to military-style units, I'm actually really excited about the progress of this technology. Compared to the Aurora, the Opsin really is twice as good, if not more than twice as good. What I'd like to see from Psyonix in the future is shortening the form factor of this device and making a thermal fusion version. The addition of thermal fusion into the digital night vision device would more than outweigh the downsides of lower frame rates and bad lighting conditions. When using night vision devices in the real world, there's a need to identify trespassers, could be things like that. Maybe you're Mad Max LARPing and you need to infiltrate the other base. I don't know. There's just everything from coyote hunting, all sorts of stuff where you need to see heat sources in the area. And for that, a digital PVS-14 style device that also included thermal imaging would more than outweigh for any of the downsides of digital night vision technology. My final verdict on the Opsin is that it represents progress, not perfection. The Opsin is a quantum leap forward compared to the Aurora, and I'll officially declare that the Opsin is, quote, real night vision. Can the Opsin beat Gen 2? Yes, with the caveats about frame rate that I've mentioned. On the other hand, do you really want to be scrolling through frame rate menus in a Red Dawn LARPing airsoft match? Maybe you get an Opsin on sale and you train around the foibles. Maybe you get a good deal. I don't know. If you're on a tight budget and you've been saving for one and only one lifetime night vision device oh. purchase, I'd honestly keep saving and get a okay. Gen 3 device. Better yet, duels. The option is not my first choice as a primary uh -huh. go fast, buy once, cry once device. On the other hand, if you already have tubes you know, like you're you happy with and you need a backup or a loaner device, yep. then yeah. you could exactly definitely throw an option on a bump helmet so that you have something for your friends to wear, and it also huh. has the benefit that you can record with it.